Hi everyone, Simon here from Beaver. Um, doing a Facebook Live video this afternoon, and I just wanted to talk about the early months and weeks of sobriety. Uh, it could be a really challenging time, and uh, I thought I'd offer some tips and advice to help get through that and answer any questions that, that anyone may have. So, first of all, a bit about my story. As some of you may know, I was a heavy drinker for over 20 years. I used to tuck into red wine every single evening I drink at least a bottle every night and um, that was my sort of go-to I found that I would drink in the evenings mainly and it was a habit that I found really hard to break um, the the big thing for me was after a period of time I started waking up shaking I had daily hangovers. I wasn't performing as well as I should have performed at work. And it was affecting me in so many parts of my life. I, I used to be paranoid about doing the school run in the morning because I was worried I was over the dream drive limit. I used to hate having a purple tongue. That, that was a, a, a real thing for me. I was so paranoid about it and conscious that people at work might smell my breath or the alcohol coming out of my skin. But I genuinely believe that everybody drank like this I, I saw posts on facebook about you know how much how good red wine was for you and and other people sharing their stories about drinking and it just kind of reinforced my incorrect belief that everybody drank everyone was drinking but since quitting i've i've realized that not everybody was drinking to the same extent that i was and you know i did have a problem and i had to address it so I've been sober for over six months now and I've met amazing people on the way and it's, it's been a, a real life-changing journey for me. The, um, it's opened up some great opportunities and I find people in the sober community are so genuine and non-judgmental. It, it's, it's really been wonderful and something that I'm really proud and honoured to be a part of. So, so a couple of the things that I, I really recommend um, doing if you're either new to sobriety or finding that you're having lots of thoughts about drinking or, or finding it challenging no matter sort of where you are on the sober journey. Uh, the first thing I would say is moderation personally for me didn't work. I tried it. I, I, I got to a point where I was adding water to my wine to try and um, cut down. And I started off by adding 20% water, 80% wine. And then I went up to 30%, then I got to 50%. I could hardly taste the wine anymore. And it it kind of helped wean me off it. And I'd also been through periods where, okay, I'll only have a glass tonight. And then all that happens is you feel that you're, you're being deprived and you end up slipping back just to your usual routine of having, you know, what I did anyway, of having um, one or two bottles a night. So I think when you're a heavy drinker you, you, and you kind of accept you've got a problem, you want to deal with it, quitting is the real true solution. And I'm not saying moderation doesn't work, but I think for most people who are members of this group, quitting is, is the way. And it is life changing. So many great things happen and there's so many benefits to it. At the start, it seems like you're losing this wonderful friend that you've had for years, but really once you get past the first few weeks the first month or two you realize that actually it, it wasn't a friend it, it's it was a it was a devil that was that was ruining your life so as i say moderation is probably something that i would try and steer clear of and if, if you're going to do it go for it and try and try and quit so the the, the real key that unlocked sobriety for me was the, uh, the um the, the, sorry, the key that, that unlocked sobriety for me was changing my mindset. So I didn't feel like, oh, I can't have a drink. I actually felt like I don't want one. And th that really is the trick to it. And I did that by reading lots of sober books and understanding what alcohol does to us, finding out the dangers of alcohol and changing my belief around alcohol. So some of the books I read, I've got some here, are Claire Pooley's Sober Diaries, 
that is a top read and I would definitely add that to your reading list. Um, it's a it's a great book. I was lucky enough to meet Claire recently and um, yeah, definitely get that one on your list. This Naked Mind by Annie Grace, also fantastic book. I'm lucky enough to work with Annie and she's an inspirational person and I, again, definitely get on board with that one. Um, one of the other things with this naked mind and he also does the alcohol experiment which is the alcohol experiment.com which you can sign up for in your first 30 days of sobriety and it walks you through each day and each day a new day will unlock and you there's videos every day you can journal in there you you learn as you go and it really keeps you engaged in the sober journey so that you're finding new things out each day you feel like you're part of something and i found that to be a really helpful tool on on the way through so yeah definitely get on board with that uh, the revolution that's another great book add to your reading list a lot of people's favorite is the unexpected joy of being sober so um that's a great one Catherine gray mrs d is going without don't worry there's only one more Mrs. D is Going Without, that's a great book by Lotta Dan. And Alcohol Explained by William Porter is another cracking book. So um, some of the books have a come at things from a very sort of medical scientific viewpoint and break down the dangers of alcohol and um, a, a more a less of a story I suppose whereas some of them actually are a bit more gritty and tell people's stories and I think they're a bit more relatable so I've, I've got there's a mix of, of, of them all there but I would definitely get arm yourself with a few sober books and I even have a diary in my phone to every month it just says sober books and it, it just reminds me to go back read a few chapters stay engaged don't get complacent on the journey even if you're 12 months 18 months sober it's worth just keep pushing and keep reading and then, i mean there's loads of blogs there's the be sober blog that, that you can also read articles on and obviously just staying in the group keeps you engaged keeps you hearing and reading other people's experiences and stories as well so i think definitely reading books sign up to the alcohol experiment um, i use a sober counter app that would be another tip is to get something like i am sober which counts for you some people don't like counting days and there was a brilliant quote in the be sober group where somebody said that being sober was a bit like when you have a baby at first you're counting the hours old then it's the days then it's the weeks then it's the months and then it's the years so with my sober app i don't really check in on it that much anymore it, it is worth having and it's great to see when you reach a milestone six months 12 months whatever it may be so you know it, if that's for you get a sober app and um, you, you can track it and it, it's rewarding to and see how long you know since since you quit so i would definitely do that you need the next tip would be to make sure you've got plenty of support around you support comes in various forms you've got a group like the be sober group where you have other people on the journey there's people who've been sober for a long time people who are just starting out and you can learn from them you'll get support from them encourage from them there's no judgment so i've i've found sober groups to be absolutely amazing they were like-minded people i didn't realize how many people were in the same boat and on the same journey but then there's other methods of support in terms of friends and family uh, alcoholics anonymous and other face-to-face -face groups that for some people so make sure whatever you do you don't just go it alone and white knuckle it because that could really can be quite challenging and you you need to have support around you so i would say personally sober groups are are the best form of support and i, I would give them a massive thumbs up but what works for you another thing i found great was accountability and by accountability i mean as i went further through the journey and got sort of a month two months into and sober i wanted to tell people i was really excited about this you know i felt like i'd done something life-changing and i was really proud of what i'd achieved and you guys in the group should be proud of what you've achieved too 
and I wanted to tell people. So I, I came out on Facebook and, and told all my friends. I was actually quite surprised at some of the reactions. It wasn't all positive. I got called boring. Um, someone else said it wouldn't last. And it just strengthened my resolve to prove them wrong. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, but it did make me more accountable. It, it, it made me feel like, well, all these people know now is yet another reason not to quit. And likewise, in the Be Sober group, by telling people your story and talking about how long you've been sober and how you're getting on, you're, you're opening up, you're sharing with people, and it makes you accountable. When you feel stronger or strong enough, I think it, you definitely want to ramp up the accountability factor so that you, you are accountable to, to people. And helping other people on their own journey makes you accountable to them as well by sharing and offering your own support. So be accountable and make yourself accountable when it feels right for you. Another thing I did early into the sober journey was poured all the wine away. I had a lot of um, alcohol in the house. I, I got rid of it all. I actually had about 20 bottles that I put outside the front door with a sign that said free to a good home. And they went within about 20 minutes. So I, I personally, I didn't want alcohol in the house. My wife still drinks occasionally, but that's fine. Um, but I, all of the red wine that was my poison, I got rid of it. And I, I think that's a, a sensible thing to do. So. One thing that I loved about getting sober was finding new drinks and um, alternative things that I could experience and enjoy. So I've got a couple of those here that might kind of inspire you. Ginseng, this is one of my absolute favorites, which is why the lid's off. This is only about seven pounds a bottle, which is what, $10, something like that. I don't know if you can get it in the US, but I get it online. And that mix with tonic and a slice of lime is absolutely amazing. There's no alcohol at all in it. It's a botanical drink. So that's a great one. Sea Lip, they've got three different, I hope you can see the bottle there. They've got three um, different flavors of Sea Lip. This isn't so cheap. This is around £25 a bottle, but it's really good. And again, mix it with tonic. Sometimes I put ginseng and Sea Lip together, mix those in, and, and it's a great drink. This one I picked up at the Mindful Drinking Festival. It's called Barago. And again, you can see it's empty. Um, again, this one with tonic water is amazing. And I've got this one, which is a Marks and Spencer's zero alcohol uh, gin and tonic flavor. Um, and again, mixed with lemonade, tonic water, something like that. It, it goes down an absolute treat. So I, I think what I'm saying is avoid temptation if you haven't the house and you've found some wonderful new drinks you know they're your replacement that's what you're going to do now so when what i do in the evening i used to break open a bottle of wine at eight o'clock i look forward to one of those to get stuck into and have that instead while i'm watching tv or, or doing whatever i'm doing so other things in terms of temptation some people when they're driving home from work they might go past the pub they might go past the off license you know if that's a temptation find a new route take a different route home you also want to watch out in the early days of sobriety for things like parties outings with friends who are heavy drinkers the dreaded wedding invites christmas parties all those things i actually avoided it all for the first 30 30 or so days i would say and it it helped me because i think early on i probably May have succumbed to drinking if I'd if I'd gone to a boozy event. Now I feel a lot stronger. I've done the work Christmas party. I've been to a New Year's Eve party and danced, you know, without alcohol. So it can be done. So all of those things um, in the early stages, I think, can be maybe a bit too much. So just just be mindful of of where you're going and who you're surrounding yourself with and just sort of think think before you do any do get involved in a in a boozy event or a boozy night i've got a couple of friends who used to come around really regularly and we'd have a curry night and it used to end always in a massive hangover huge amounts of alcohol and i still haven't had the resolve to invite them round for a curry night 
it's over. But I'm building up to that one, and hopefully we'll we'll get there soon. But the, it is important to take stock and and avoid temptation in those early stages. So um, I think that's really important, or was for me, was getting passionate about it. Like I love being sober. It, I've seen the benefits. It's changed my life completely. Try it. It's easy for me to say it, but try not to come at this from a perspective of you're being deprived. You're actually getting a beautiful gift, the gift of sobriety. And in the first few days and weeks, it doesn't feel like that. But believe me, there is something amazing waiting for you when you get further into it. I, I, I do a lot of running and marathons and I try and think of it like I've just, I thought of sobriety, like I've just signed up for a, a a new marathon event and got excited about it and thought yeah i can't wait and every day is going to be like a training run and you know think of something like that where you can actually be passionate about this it's your new the new you the new hobby that you've got so you, you want to be on board with it rather than fighting it and actually thinking positive about what you're doing and completely 100 percent on board with it rather than feeling a sense of deprivation and oh, i can't have a drink so I really believe that if you can change your mindset and think positively and be really on board with sobriety, you're, you're going to smash it. And that's that's one of the, the keys to it. Obviously, if you do slip up in the early days, don't beat yourself up about it. I went through day one, five, six, seven times. You know, I remember having a, a mess in tears with my wife because I, I'd had one day off of drinking and just couldn't another one. And... It, it, I found it really, really hard just to get through those days. I drank every single day for 20 years, and that that's tough. So don't you know if you? I, I haven't since that point slipped up. But if you do slip up, use it as a learning experience. What's it taught you? Why did you slip up? What triggered it? And actually analyze it. And I think that's where journaling and blogging. It is plays a really big part as well. I've written down my experiences pretty much every day I stopped drinking. So I, I would highly recommend doing that. Buy a diary, just sign up to a blogger a, account if you want to do it online, or you can use something like the alcohol experiment where you can write your experiences every day. And you can look back at that. I, I posted a picture on my one so I could see what I, what my face looked like um, at the start compared to what it looks like now and my my skin is much better my eyes are kind of glow I haven't got loads of dark underneath them or not as much and and that's just the stuff on the outside imagine what it's doing on the inside so definitely journaling is is really really good you can look back at it and I think it strengthens your resolve as you get further down the line several months into sobriety when you think oh, I've got this nailed you know and you might let your guard down a little bit it's worth looking back at how bad you really felt and what it was really like those hangovers and how it was at the start and it just reminds you I never want to go back to that I never want to be like that again. so I, I would definitely recommend write it down journal and, and keep a record of what you're doing there's what you're doing there's loads of tools that you can that you can use to do that another thing i've trained myself quite well on is not getting wrapped up in thoughts about drinking our brains produce thousands and thousands of thoughts every single day and they can be the most random thoughts about all sorts of things when one pops in about alcohol it, it catches our attention and it very easy to run away with it and start getting wrapped up in the thought. I often use the analogy that it's a bit like the thoughts are a fast flowing river in our minds, they're like rapids, and we're sat, we're sat on the bank watching the thoughts go by. Now that's where you want to be, just watching the thoughts, observing the thoughts. As soon as one about alcohol comes on, comes along, it can be very easy to jump into the river and get washed away in the rapids. And next thing you know, you're taking a drink. So when you have a thought about drinking, sit on the bank, watch the thought and just let it pass you by. And they go. Sometimes they don't go till the next day, but they do pass. And I think that's really important is, is to just observe thoughts and not get wrapped up in them 
and that that served me well i do do meditation quite a bit as well and that's a great way of learning how to keep your mind still and to to not get caught up in thoughts or not let thoughts pop into your head and not to run away with them so a little list here of th of the things that uh, my, uh, yeah i think i've been for all the all the things that um i experienced in the early weeks and then the last thing i'd say is stay engaged stay talking in groups, asking questions, sharing experiences. Don't let your guard down, no matter where you are in the journey. I've seen people who've been sober for four or five years and they've slipped up and taken a drink because they thought, I've got this, I've got this nailed, I can, I'm okay, a glass of wine will be fine. But one glass of wine is actually unlocking the whole thing again, the whole habit. It's not one of wine it's a lifetime of addiction and that's what will happen so keep keeping your guard up is is also really really important so work on the mindset read the books find the alternative alcohol drinks track the day keep a journal avoid temptation but pubs off licenses events don't get wrapped up in thoughts and keep talking to the support that you've got around you so have a great day. I hope it was useful. Any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll, I'll reply to them. And uh, hopefully we can have another video again soon. Thank you. Bye.